Hello again, everybody. In this video, we will modify our code so that we run experiments. To do so, we will write the code for the final two sub procedures. We will also learn about editing the user interface to create sliders to modify variable values throughout the model runs. We will also create monitors that will track data in our model during the model runs. Hi, everyone. I'm going to be walking you through how to change constants into variables and why we might want to do that in the NetLogo model. So if you'll remember, um, so far, everything we've built, we've used constants for our values. So if we look back through our code here, uh, we already have a constant set up for the number of turtles. We have a constant set up for how far the agents can move, the turtles can move. And we also have constants for things like uh, if this random float, this comparison between 100 and uh, if it's if a random number is going to be less than eight. So that number eight is a constant. So we're going to wanna to vary those to be able to run experiments. So now that we've started building our model, we wanna see what effect these different variables have on the outcome of the infection. Uh, so we're going to start um, with the, the population. So uh, let's go ahead and increase the total population that we start with to 200. So I'm just gonna change this constant going to change it to 200 and we're just going to leave that as a constant because we want 200 agents 200 turtles every time we start the model uh, but now in in terms of how many we want infected that we're going to vary so in this uh, command right here this ask in of 10 turtles uh, we didn't really mention it too much before but this in of is another random generator so it will choose a number of turtles randomly from the whole set of turtles in the model so since we have 200, this n of 10 means it's going to choose 10 random turtles. Uh, so we're going to want to vary this number right here. So we had it set to 10. Now we want to change that. We want to call this a variable name. So we're going to call this starting hyphen number hyphen infected. So the starting number of infected, that is going to be our variable to identify that every time we run the model, we may want that to be a different number. Uh, so to make that happen, we're going to go back up to our user interface. We're going to set it to authoring mode. And now we can create a slider. So sliders are going to be how we're going to vary this over different model runs. So we've already used this before. So I'm going to right click in this green area. And this time I'm going to choose slider. And you see that we still have a lot of options, but we're only going to stick with slider for now. Uh, so this gives us a lot of questions. We want the global variable name to be exactly what we just called it in the, in the code. So we want it to be starting dash number dash infected. And now we're going to give it a minimum value of zero, uh, an increment of one, and we want the maximum value to be the total potential population. So we're going to set that to 200. The default value that it says right here is set at 50. We want to set that default at 20 because um, we, we don't want the default to be too high to start out with. So 20 is going to represent 10% of that population of 200. All right, so let's click OK. And we have a slider now. And we can move that into place just like before. We can put that wherever we want on the user interface. And then if we switch back to, um, to interactive mode, then we can interact with that. We can change that slider now to be however many we want of the infected. So I'm gonna set that back to 20, uh, click set up. And then now we have 200 total agents that appear on the landscape and 20 of those, 20 of them randomly are going to be chosen to be infected to start out the model. So if we click go, we can see that we still have a very high infection rate. So that's, that's gonna be one of the next things we're gonna change. So we have three more constants in the current version of the model that we want to change into variables. The first one is the movement, and this is how far the turtles can move. Uh, then we want to change the movement distance into a variable, so how far away do the turtles have to be before they start transmitting that disease. And then we want to change the uh, disease transmission chance or the infect chance. Uh, so that's how likely it is to catch the disease if you uh, go by a turtle that has it. Uh, so we're going to make those modifications. We're going to change these three variables. So we're going to change this movement code right here. Um, instead of forward, uh, forward one, we're going to say forward movement. And so that movement is going to be that variable. Uh, same thing down here in the infect uh, sub procedure, we're going to change the uh, ask turtles in radius. And we're going to change that one to infect distance. And then right below that, if random float 100 is less than, instead of eight, we're gonna change that eight into a variable. We're gonna call that uh, infect chance. 
Just like before, now that we've actually uh, changed our constants into variables, we need to go back to the user interface and create three new sliders. One for that uh, movement, uh, one for uh, infect distance, and one for infect chance. And so those are going to vary based on the numbers that uh, are going to be appear on the screen right now. In the last video, we used turtle interactions to allow turtles to infect other turtles. For the model to be realistic, however, turtles not only need to get infected, they also need to recover. After recovering, they will have immunity from the disease for some period of time. We are now going to write the final two sub procedures for the model. The first will program turtles recovery, and the second will program losing immunity. Let's start by adding recover at the bottom of our list of sub procedures under the go procedure. Then let's scroll down to the bottom of our code and set up the recover procedure. Remember to write to and add end at the bottom. As is common with many diseases, we are going to program the illness so that it lasts a specific amount of time, which will be adjustable by using a slider as Daniel showed in the last portion of this video. We will begin by writing ask turtles. Inside the square brackets, we will add an if conditional so that we target the infected or yellow and X shaped turtles. This is similar to what we did in the in to infect sub procedure. Now, after the if color equals yellow, we are going to add a counter inside of the square brackets. In this case, every time the model ticks, we are going to add one to the length of time the turtle has been ill. We'll keep track of this through the tur turtle attribute illness. So we will type sit illness, illness plus one. This counter will add a value of one to the value of illness that the turtle had on a previous tick. So with each tick, an infected turtle's illness value increases by a value of one. Now we will write the final part of the to recover code. A turtle will recover when its illness value is higher than the amount of time the infection lasts. We also want turtles to change their color to white and their shape to a circle once they have recovered so we can visually assess what turtles are healthy versus infected versus recovered while running the model. We'll do this by using an if conditional again. Type if illness is greater than infectious dash period, set color white, set shape circle, set size 1.5, set illness zero. This asks the turtles if their illness period is greater than the amount of time the infectious period is to change their color to white and to change their illness counter to zero. When they are white, their shape is a circle and their illness counter is zero, they're recovered from the infection. After turtles recover, they become white and turn into the shape of a circle. After they lose immunity, they will again turn blue and into the shape of a person, indicating that they once again are susceptible to infection. As with all sub procedures, we'll begin by adding lose hyphen immunity in the go procedure at the bottom of the list. We will then scroll down and set up the lose immunity sub procedure by writing to lose immunity and adding end at the end. In the lose immunity procedure, we will start by asking turtles if their color equals white. However, we do not only want to know if their color equals white, we also want to know that their immunity is going to last a certain amount of time. To make the model more realistic, we are not going to have immunity last the same amount of time for every turtle. Rather, the model will have variable values for waning immunity and the length of time a turtle remains immune will depend on personal chance. To program this, we will write and after white and then type waning hyphen immunity, then use the less than symbol and type random hyphen float 100. In square brackets after this add set color blue. What this code does is it asks the turtles if their color is white and if the waning immunity value is less than a randomly drawn number from a set of 100. If both of these conditions are met, then the turtles will lose immunity and turn blue again, making them susceptible again to being infected. Now we're going to head to the user interface and set up our last two sliders. One will be for the infectious period and the other will be for waning immunity. Left click somewhere on the user interface where you want to add your slider and select create slider. Let's first set up the infectious period slider. Make sure you type the name of it in the global variable box exactly as it appears, appears in the code or it will not work. We are going to have the infectious period have a minimum of zero, an interval of one, and a maximum of 50. Now we will make another slider for waning immunity. Add the slider where you like on the user interface and write waning-immunity as it appears in your model code in the global variable box. 
Waning immunity will have a minimum of zero, an interval of one, and a maximum of 100. And now our code is complete. But of course, we'll have to check for errors and make sure everything's working properly. We're coming down to the end of this video, and the final thing we're going to do is to get the model ready to run experiments. So we need to be able to understand what's happening in the model itself. So what are the interactions causing, and what effect are they having on the infection as it spreads throughout the population? So to keep track of this, we're going to create some monitors. And for this, we'll right-click on the interface and go down to Create Monitor. And when the box pops up, uh, you can see this command box, we're going to actually type in a command, and this is actually more code, because we want the monitors, in this case, this first monitor, to keep track of how many turtles are still healthy. We're going to create two other monitors to look at the ones that are infected and the ones that are immune, but this first one, we just want to see what, uh, how many turtles are healthy. Uh, so the command we're going to type in is count turtles with, and then open a bracket, color equals blue, and then close bracket. The width here is another type of conditional. So the width just means uh, that we're going to ask uh, or count all turtles with that color. Um, so it's a conditional that if the turtle's condition indicates that their color equals blue, then they're counted among the healthy turtles. So we should also, in this box, we should change our display name. Otherwise, it's just going to show the command and it'll look messy. So we're going to change the name here to healthy turtles. So we'll hit OK. And now this monitor will count how many turtles are healthy or blue in the model. We need two more types of monitors now. So uh, we need one to track the number of infected turtles, as I mentioned, and another to track the number of immune turtles. So go ahead and pause the video here and try to create both of these monitors on your own. If you have trouble, though, I'm going to put the code up on the screen so you can see how, how it needs to be done. So in this video, we learned about using variables instead of constant values for experiments. We did this by adding sliders to the user interface that allow you to change a variable's value between model runs. We also created a sub-procedure that used a counter in the toRecover sub-procedure, with the turtles counting the amount of time that they had been ill. We also created monitors to keep track of data while running our experiments. Now that we have working models, let's get on to creating some data so that we can learn about infections. Thanks for following along.